Good day! I am going to be harvesting our jet set onions today, which are just over there. That's why I was looking over there. They are ready to come out because they have all tipped over. And also, I want to use that bed for Autumn King carrots, which I'm going to be sowing. And also, I've decided that I'm going to put fennel in there as well. Let's just show you the fennel plug plants. These are our fennel plugs. These on the left slightly older than these on the right, which were sown later. And I want to put those into this bed. We've got some silver skin onions in here. And then we also have our jet set onions and these lettuce which you're going to see, those are self-seeded costs. All I'm going to do is exactly the same as the garlic. I'm going to get a fork, small fork, hand fork, put it underneath and then lever these out. And then they're going to be stored on our bench like the garlic was. You want to keep the basal plate here intact so it dries well and stores well. Our onion harvest this year which I need to sort. We've got some pretty decent sized ones and these will do really well for just making into pickles and then we have some which are quite a bit smaller there. That was half a bed, so effectively it was that end over there, 1.2 metres by 1.2 that would have been. And then we had the elephant garlic and some of those silver skin in this end. What I did notice when I put my fork into the soil was that the lower, from about maybe six inches down, the soil was quite compacted. That's because it's been sitting there all winter with little disturbance so has really become quite compacted with the rain and it's one of our few raised beds we only have two raised beds so this bed is three decking boards high where most of our beds as you can see over there are, are edge beds they're just a single decking board high and Effectively, what I have done in order to loosen up this soil is I've used a hand fork whilst I've been weeding the whole thing. I've used a hand fork to really get down to about a foot and loosen that soil because it has just become very compacted, something it wouldn't have done on our other beds like that cheeky prince bed over there simply because it's right in the ground. When I got down to about a foot, I noticed that there were worms about a foot down. So I haven't disturbed the microcosm layer of the worms. And hopefully they will come back into this soil once we start adding things. What I am going to do now is not put in our carrots yet, not sow our carrots yet, not put in our fennel yet. I'm just going to give it a really good water and then we'll put the carrots and the fennel. Well, we'll definitely sow the carrots in the next day or so. The fennel, I might just leave them grow on in these modules a little bit more. We'll see. Anyway, that's one job done. Onions harvested, bed weeded and soil structure checked and now to be corrected. Okay, bye. Good day. Though in reality, it's a bit of a bittersweet day today. I don't go to our post box every day because there's usually junk mail in it. And um, I only really go if I'm expecting something or I, I check it twice a week. This morning, um, I checked the post box and... 
was absolutely delighted to receive this book. Jacqueline Rowan's How to Marry Your Husband. My heart leapt because this is such an exciting first novel for a friend of mine. But as soon as my heart leapt, it also dropped as well. Because very sadly, Jax, who I knew Jackie is as Jax, um, she's a member of Planet Vegetaria. Sadly, she died at the end of April, very suddenly and unexpectedly. Many people on Planet Vegetaria will um, have seen Jackie's or Jax's posts um, about what she was growing. She was one of the co-directors with her fiancé of the Bulindi Chimpanzee Project and had been involved in that for, for very many years and, and did, did such fantastic work as, as her, her, um, her partner continues to do. Oh, and Jackie Jax was one of those people that you had in your life that even though I didn't see her very often, when I saw a post from her or a comment from her on my, my Facebook timeline, it would just lift my spirits. She was just fabulous. I mean, there's no, there's no sort of other way to say it. And she shared with us at the end or sort of, I think around mid April that she'd written her first novel, which is this book. And I was so overjoyed. And even though it was going to be available on Kindle very soon, it's available on Kindle. I love paperbacks. I love books. So I waited for, I bought it there and then, but I bought the paperback edition, which, which obviously I now have. It took me quite a while to process the fact that Jackie was no longer in my life, which was really odd because we saw each other an awful lot in the, in the early noughties because we worked on quite a few theatre projects together. And when Jackie joined a group of people, the whole room lit up, literally. Well, not literally, but you know what I mean. And we sort of kept in touch on Facebook and when she was over here, we would try and meet up. But as is a busy life, those things rarely happen. Of course, now, unfortunately, it's not going to happen. But I, I do cherish the time that I spent with Jax and the, the time of my life that I shared a lot with her. She, yeah, she, she was just one of these fabulous people. I mean, she, she really was. She could lift your, your mood and on her down days, which seemed to be few, but many of us hide those anyway, um, one will be able to lift her spirits. So why am I talking about this today? Well, A, it's personal to me. It's, it is about what I am and who I am. But secondly, these sunflowers behind me, they were from um, Nick from Nick's Allotment Diary. He gave them uh, to us when we met him at Malvern last year. And I had sown them. And then when I heard about Jack's dying, I was just in the sort of stages where in the next few weeks I was going to, to repot them. And, and as soon as I remembered the name of the ones behind me, which is Alchemy, it reminded me of Jackie because Jackie was an alchemist, really. She would brighten things. She would change things. Her mere presence um, would lift people. And yeah, that's what alchemists used to do, or, or they, you know, are supposed to have used to turned very common matter, you know, lead and things like that into gold. Um, and make them sparkly. And that's what Jackie did. She, she made any interaction with her sparkly and joyful. So I'm not going to get down. I've had that time. I'm not going to get down. I'm going to treasure this book.
this first and only novel by Jax. Um, set it on my bedside table for, for reading and just have her in my memory as a truly special person, really. It's as simple as that. If you want to um, contribute to Bulundi Chimpanzee Project, I'll put the link when we do the, the, the YouTube upload for this. Um, but don't feel obliged to, but if you wish to, please do, because it's a fantastic project. If you just want to read more about the project, um, just do Belindi Chimpanzee Project and look at their Facebook page, or I'm sure they've got a web page as well, though I, I look on the Facebook page. So, yeah, that's it for today. A slightly different A Week at the Plot day. But you know what? Every day is different on A Week at the Plot. And... I'm glad to be sharing it with you. See you soon. Good day. The other day we were talking about our neighbor's hedgehog den here. And today we've installed a wildlife camera to see if it gets any visitors. I've also been thinking more about extending our washing up bowl pond and removing this rhubarb, as you know, and putting it further down and extending it a little bit. I'm not quite sure how yet, but that's now firmly rooted in my head. But all the comments about that also got me thinking about where else I could put a pond, maybe a larger pond. And I've realised under here would be a really good space. We're not using that tub at the moment, though I don't think I'd use that as a pond, though you could obviously line that with a, a pond liner and use it as a above ground pond. Maybe we should do that. Hmm. But under here, this is where our ceanothus is and our grapevine. And this is really just the dead area. The only thing that grows under here is bindweed. What I thought is if we cut the ceanothus back a bit and then had a pond down here, um, a pond down here, which went partly in the shade and partly in the sun, that would be an excellent place for wildlife. It would also bring more frogs and things to this area here which as you can see with those beans over there get quite damaged by slugs oh look there's a snail down there can you see snails down there anyway never mind so i think that would be a great area for another pond we'd need to make sure that when these leaves fell they didn't all fall into the pond. So maybe we need some type of grate on top to stop them doing that in the autumn. But I want a wildlife pond anyway. I don't want a pristine, crimped and trimmed wildlife area. I want it to be wild. So yeah, I think that's a good area. I'm going to mull that a bit more and maybe that's another project for the winter. Okay, bye. Say bye, Mr. Snail. Bye. Good day. We're at our broad bean bed and we have germination. If I come over here, can you see that one in the centre there? That's another one. And then in the centre there is another. There's another in the centre there. And if I look over there, I can see a few just crossing the surface. Oh, over there. 
excuse my shadow can you see those better maybe not i can't oh yeah there there's one and there's another so yeah our broad beans oh there's another one oh, oh our broad beans are germinating so these are the loose de ottono autumn harvesting broad beans that we sowed eight days ago i think it was on the 8th of july very pleased about that there are as you can see there are some calendula over there that have self-seeded which i will need to take out because i don't want weeds to over over crowd this bed and here we have our turnips in those last four rows which have certainly perked up since planting as have all of these different types of beetroot so again very happy with the way they are doing fingers crossed they'll carry on producing nicely see you soon bye when we put this vast piece of vinyl down we cut around this lavender to make sure that it grew and I'm really pleased we did that because the bees are really enjoying time on here but one of the issues of putting vinyl down is you get pools of water like this and I look at that and I think oh no a pool of water but then I don't like it but then there are other things that do like it can you see Mr Frog in there there he is Mr Frog likes this water Less. So it just goes to show having even small amounts of water in the most obscure places or on the most obscure bits of plastic can actually bring you joy and wildlife. And hopefully Mr. Frog is eating slugs and snails. Bye. Good day. Sometimes as growers, we need to make decisions about things that we really don't want to make and we usually put them off. And I have been doing this with my asparagus beans. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. These asparagus beans really don't seem to be doing too well. They're the, these are Coco de Pampol and these are the asparagus bean. And yes, we've had issues with the soil and the soil has been fed and the plants have been fed, but these are still looking pretty yellow. What I have decided to do is I am going to leave them in just in case they start to do something. But I also have some spare Borlotti plants and I've decided that I'm going to put them in behind these asparagus beans. So I'm going to be putting them in down here. Yes, they will climb up these bean poles. But I'm not sure whether these asparagus beans are going to climb up the bean pole. And I'd rather have some Borlotti than no beans on these. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bean poles. These are the Bolotti that we have spare. I think we've got uh, one, two, three, four, ten modules of these. Again, they're not looking particularly bright in terms of a um, of, uh, sort of lovely dark green, but that's because they really need to come out of these modules. So I'm going to put these in behind those asparagus beans.
So I've put those in. You can see those new ones at the back in the centre. I've angled them all towards a cane. So hopefully when they grow, they'll find the cane. And as with everything that you plant, they are now having a really good water. And then fingers crossed. I did think when I was doing these, if the asparagus beans do grow, how will I know the difference? Well, the asparagus beans are supposed to be about a foot long and the bolotti bean pods are only about eight inches long. So hopefully we'll tell. And also the bolotti would be speckled. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Good day. I am in the shed. It's Sunday morning and it's quite damp out there. It's been drizzling or raining for much. In fact, since we woke up, it, it was raining quite heavily when we woke up. I think it's lessened a little at the moment. There's sort of drizzle rather than rain, but it's not really a day to be outside doing lots of things out there, though I may sow some carrots. Yeah, I may sow some carrots, not quite sure yet. I was hoping that I was going to be doing a seed saving video with our overwintered cost lettuce. But with this damp weather, that's not sensible. So I'm just going to leave that for a few days. Hopefully we'll have warmer weather and the, the um, seeds will dry and then I'll be able to harvest those for seed saving. So what I am going to be doing today is tearing our cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's not it's not just sort of you know a fun thing to do um in fact it's not a particularly fun thing to do but it's um it's for our compost effect yeah that's what it's for sorry somebody just popped their head <laughs> literally around here and <laughs> asked me a question i didn't even know they were there um um gosh they're quite stealthy they're quite stealthy these plot holders Anyway, um, yes, cardboard for our compost. Um, there's greens and browns when it comes to, to compost and cardboard is browns and that helps balance out the very wet greens like grass cuttings and at this time of year, tomato prunings, which we put in our hot bin composter and things like that. So cardboard is really important. And I just thought I'd, I'd go through a few bits of cardboard. I mean, Amazon. Amazon um, envelopes, cardboard envelopes are really good. Just they're really easy to tear and they're fabulous to put in your, your compost. Most of our household goods, uh, foods that we get nowadays are also plastic free. Um, the sheen that you see on a lot of food packaging is very often a starch sheen so that is absolutely fine to go in composting so things like here's linda mccartney's burgers packaging no plastic on that just give it a tear and um yeah put that into a bin we put it into a large plastic bin and then we've got a ready-made supply of torn up cardboard as well as shredded paper we've got another bin for shredded paper to mix into our compost when we're adding things to our compost. Um, I've, I've got some bran flakes here, Morrison's bran flakes. Again, that the sheen on that is a starch sheen. It, it's not a plastic. One good rule of thumb, if you think that your cardboard may actually have a veneer of plastic on it, then just tear it slowly. Because if when you tear it, you get a sort of plastic bit like cling film between these two, sorry, between these two bits. Let me do it that way. Between those two bits, then that has got a plastic veneer on it and you don't want to use that in your compost. But as I say, most things these days do not. Um, quiche, here's a quiche 
I've taken the plastic film out of here, obviously. But again, that can just be torn up and added to a torn up cardboard bin for you to add to compost. So I'm going to be doing that now. I'm going to think about sowing some carrots. I most probably won't. There are a few magazines and books at home and a few things I've saved on my tablet that I really want to read. So today is most probably a sensible day to do those things. So yeah, that is a week at the plot for another week. I hope you're well. I hope you've had a good week. And um, if you do have any questions about anything I do on a week at the plot, then please do put them in the comments below and ask the question. Uh, if you think I've done or I could do something a better way, then let me know. And uh, I will see you next week for another week at the plot. Though first, hopefully you'll have watched this one, which is uploaded on a Monday, tomorrow in fact. Okay, see you soon. Bye.